I am beating every N64 game, and I mean all of them. The twist is, the next game I play is randomly selected, so I have no clue what's coming next. This is the journey to beating every N64 game. Game number 56, Kobe Bryant and NBA Courtside. Released in 1998, this game was developed by Left Field Productions and published by Nintendo. Hey, now here's a sports game I actually played back in the day. I'm not sure how popular it was, but one of my friends had this game and we played it at his house quite a lot. I remember it being awesome, but well, these sports games have all not aged well so far, so uh, we'll see how this goes. So a common question I get is how do you beat sports games? Well, the rule I came up with is I have to beat the main championship of that sport in the quickest way possible. This game has a playoffs mode, so we will complete that to beat this game. I could also set the playoffs to one game series, which is really nice in games like this. Like usual, I picked the obvious best team from back then, the Indiana Pacers. Hey, don't hate, Reggie Miller's just too good along with Mark Jackson, Chris Mullen, and Rick Smits. The first game was against the Boston Celtics. I don't recognize the players from this team, although Kenny Anderson sounds familiar, and apparently they had Chauncey Billups back then. I didn't know that. One thing I remembered from this game is that nearly every shot will hit the rim, even if you launch it from full court, although it never actually goes in, so I decided to demonstrate it to my chat. It almost, it's always gonna like go in, so look. Reggie Miller oh, for three. okay, that wasn't supposed <laughs> that wasn't supposed to happen. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how that happened, but hey, if anyone's going to do that, it's Reggie Miller. I realized real quick in this game that there really isn't any rubber banding, so I started to pull ahead drastically, and I just started to run out the clock. The game ended with Rick Smits with a massive dunk just to rub it in. The game's difficulty was on Rookie by default, but I bumped it up after this since there wasn't any rubber banding. Our second game was against the Chicago Bulls, a legendary team of Ron Harper, Scotty Pippen, Dennis Rodman, Luke Longley, and of course the world famous roster player. Yeah, once again, Michael Jordan doesn't let video games use his likeness, so they just gave him a generic name. This game got off to a rough start for me, with Dennis Rodman making three shots in a row. He's supposed to be the rebound guy, come on now. A frustrating thing for this game is a lot of the time when you have a wide open break to the basket, the player will opt for a layup instead of a dunk. I'm not sure if there's a way to force a dunk, but come on, it's way more satisfying to do one. The graphics in this one, they're honestly pretty decent. The players themselves don't look the greatest, but the court has active lighting effects from the overhead lights and the people in the stands are fully drawn out rather than just like a dot sitting there. On the new difficulty, this game was a lot closer. Dennis Rodman was just making every single shot he went for, even ridiculous hook shots. Dude, he, he can't be stopped. I was up by four points going into the fourth quarter. Chris Mullen with an easy layup to put the Pacers ahead by seven, and that was pretty much the nail in the coffin. We won this one 45 to 36. Game three was against the Milwaukee Bucks. The only player I recognized on this team was Ray Allen. A pretty well-known player, you know, he was all right at that shooting thing. The game opened with Ray Allen getting a wide open jump shot, but Dale Davis answered with a huge dunk. It always zooms in when a dunk happens, and I can appreciate how it tries to make it more exciting. While you're playing a game, it just sounds like a typical basketball game, you know? Occasionally, it'll play a short bit of a song you'd typically hear during a game, and you'll hear the crowd cheering as well. And then there's the sounds of the game itself, and every now and then a very generic announcer guy will say the person's name if they make a shot, but it's not that much. Reggie Too good. Miller. Going into the half, the Pacers were up 20 to 14. You know, the Bucks, they just didn't come to play today. I just pulled further and further ahead slowly, and they never really had a chance to get anything going. I found the computer will never really try to intentionally foul you when you're down in points. Not sure if they're just not programmed to do that or what, but it makes it easy. I ran out the clock in the final quarter and beat the Bucks 37-22. So then it was time, the NBA Championship Finals. 
we were up against the San Antonio Spurs. The pink logo they used to have just, it gives me a lot of nostalgia for that era of basketball. I honestly like that one better than their current logo. They had a couple great players in David Robinson and of course, Tim Duncan. The game opened right away with Reggie Miller draining a three-pointer. You just can't leave this guy open. On the next possession, Vinny Del Negro misses the shot leading to a wide open fast break for Chris Mullen and he misses the layup. You've got to make those, man. You're in the NBA for crying out loud. The Spurs had to answer quick and answer they did. Rick Smith gets completely rejected leading to a beautiful alley-oop for David Robinson. Oh man, I felt that one here at home. The first quarter ended all tied up at nine. End of the second quarter now and the Spurs take their first lead of the game with David Robinson nailing a baseline jumper but then Reggie Miller immediately answers draining a three-pointer. Later on tied up at 15 Rick Smith with a beautiful hook shot then Tim Duncan answers with a very glitchy jump shot under the basket. Not sure the laws of physics applied on that one folks. Here in the final minute of the second quarter now the Pacers on a fast break and Reggie Miller with a reverse 180 slam. The athleticism on that man is insane. At the end of the first half the Pacers were up 22 to 21. Right away, end of the third now, another star coming off the bench, Jalen Rose, hits a three to put the Pacers up by four. A bit later, the Spurs have the ball under the basket. Tim Duncan goes in for a dunk and gets swatted, but Robinson has his back with a dunk of his own. Non-stop action here in the finals. Both teams came to play and the fans loved it. And here, Robinson once again showing everyone why he's making the big bucks by phasing the ball through the backboard. How does he do it? End of the third quarter now and it's all tied up, 29 each. It all came down to the fourth quarter. Who wanted it more? The NBA Championship. Mark Jackson here with a wide open drive to the basket and misses the layup. You gotta be kidding me, man. They'll definitely look back on these plays when reviewing the film. The Spurs down five with under two minutes to go and Tim Duncan brings the team's energy back with a beautiful slam dunk. Then on the next possession, Chris Mullen just blatantly goaltends here, bringing the Spurs within one. Under a minute to go now and the Pacers up by three. Tim Duncan putting the team on his back, nails the bank shot from free throw range. The Pacers have the ball now, up by one and the Spurs opt to not go for the foul. I'm not sure I agree with the coaching decision here. You got a foul in this scenario. Reggie Miller waiting out the shot clock, throws up a three, and boom goes the dynamite. <laughs> Are you guys, you guys suggested I say that, so there you, there you go. No recovering after that, folks. The Indiana Pacers win the championship 41 to 35. Reggie Miller securing the finals MVP with a 22 point showing. Well done. It shows a brief cutscene with your players celebrating on the court and holding the trophy, then the credits play. Game complete. I usually like to show how foul shots work in these games, but well, I literally never got fouled by the computer. Even though fouls were turned on, so uh, never got any footage of that. So yeah, there you have it. My journey to beating Kobe Bryant in NBA courtside. We played a lot of this game back in the day, but eh, it didn't age too well. None of these realistic sports games did, honestly. I'm I'm sure back then it felt real to us because we'd never seen anything better, you know? I say this every time, but the arcade style unrealistic sports games age way better than the realistic ones. The game was pretty decent for a sports game, it played well, I appreciated that there was no rubber banding, the graphics were decent, and it ran smooth. I gave it a 3 out of 10 for enjoyability and a 2 out of 10 for difficulty. Definitely recommend playing this with friends rather than against the computer. But yeah, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching I really appreciate it. If you did enjoy the video consider giving it a like as it does help the channel a lot and if you like this series make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one. But yeah thanks for watching and here is a sneak peek at what is coming next. There are 335 games on the list could be anything. Let's find out. 3, 2, 1, go. 276 what's that? Oh, hey, we're playing Snowboard Kids. All right. I haven't ever played this.